Hello everybody, this is Cameron Snow with Dynomics.com. In this video, I'm going to be going over Dynomics Geomechanics module. Uh, if you uh, haven't looked at the Geomechanics module recently, um, you may notice a few changes. We have recently split out the pore pressure from this module, and that was to help you focus on evaluating pore pressure in one step and then geomechanics and reservoir continuity in a separate step. And please note that this uh, module is also different than our 1D geomechanical earth model, which I cover in a additional uh, tutorial video. So with, with this module, uh, the primary um, outputs that, that I want you to take away from it are a review of the Young's modulus, the bulk modulus, and the shear modulus, uh, as well as an understanding of uh, how brittleness is calculated, and how that uh, may translate into what it is you may be able to complete in your well bore if you were to drill a horizontal well. So uh, there are a handful of options here, and all these options are set on a per uh, well basis, not on a per zone basis. And the reason why is these options really shouldn't change uh, that much as you go from zone to zone. So to start off, uh, we choose what it is we want to analyze on. So that could be gross reservoir, net reservoir, or net pay. Uh, in most cases, I recommend analyzing on net reservoir as uh, that seems to intuitively make more sense because your, your frack may connect up more than just uh, you know, your net pay. It will also connect up uh, reservoir intervals that may flow uh, water as well. So that's why we like to to set net reservoirs our default. In terms of the brittleness method, uh, we have three options here. We have what we call the dynamic simpleton method, Jarvie et al. and Wang and Gale. The dynamic simpleton method is based on our V clay, uh, whereas the Jarvie et al. method uh, calculates brittleness based on the uh, quartz fraction, and the Wang and Gale method include uh, dolomite into that evaluation as well. So um, <clears throat> when, you're, when you're doing that, you will, of course, need to, to determine your mineralogy. There's uh, essentially two ways you can do this. First of all, you can do it via the inversion. Um, so go to the mineral inversion um, module, uh, set up your mineralogy, and then uh, you know, run that calculation. Or you can use Aroma Yuma cross plot. Uh, the caveat on that is that, of course, you need to then have a PE curve. And if you're working across large areas, a lot of times you, you do not have a PE curve available to you. So I tend to use the Simpleton method, and I tend to use uh, inversion as the default, as the default for our uh, brittleness mineralogy. Okay, and so, so that will get you through the calculation of your brittleness, which is shown here in, in this curve. And what, what we try to do for you is we try to highlight uh, where, you, um, wh where your brittleness is less than a certain threshold. So here in this uh, non-organic shell, uh, you know, we, we have relatively high V clays, around 35 to 50%. Uh, so, you know, our brittleness is a bit lower here. Uh, quite brittle in the Alston chalk, and then down in the Eagleford section here, and this is a fairly high clay portion of the Eagleford, um, you know, once again, we see our brittlenesses are substantially lower. Okay, and then this is, uh, you know, backed up by our uh, modulus data, where we see um, lower moduli, in, across the shell intervals and relatively uh, higher moduli uh, here in the Alston chalk. And uh, also on the Poisson's ratio, you know, we see uh, higher Poisson's ratios here in our plastic interval and lower Poisson's ratios here in the Alston chalk. So um, that, that all works out uh, the way we would expect it to um, and really ties well to the brittleness. Now, in terms of the second half of the analysis uh, in here, you know, what, what we want to focus on is really highlighting what packages may be connected. So first of all, we need to define what a frack barrier is. Uh, we can define this in a number of ways. 
Um, for example, I could say at brittleness uh, less than or equal to 0 0.5. Uh, that's my default. I could also, you know, let's say I wanted to base that on something like Poisson's ratio. So I could say Poisson's uh, at Poisson's underscore ratio and let's say greater than um, 0 0.2. And uh, when I do that, um, now we can see that we are, you know, really flagging both the intervals above and below the Alston chalk in this well as uh, frac barriers. Um, is that the right value? Uh, I would say that that really depends on your completion method. So talk to your uh, completion engineers about that. Um, and remember, this can be this can be pretty sensitive. Uh, so just you know, make sure to evaluate um, the sensitivity on this by varying these cutoffs. So I'm just going to leave that uh, for now. I think that that'll do a good job of, of highlighting what we want to look at. I'm actually going to set that back to point two because that puts a few uh, potential frac barriers within our Alston chalks. So I'm just going to zoom in here. And here's what we we, we now have three options. We have minimum thickness, uh, maximum discontinuity, and maximum frac barrier. So the minimum thickness, this parameter says what is the minimum uh, thickness of the um, either the net reservoir or net pay that we're analyzing on that, that we want to uh, evaluate. The maximum discontinuity is that if something is non-reservoir, what is the maximum non-reservoir that we will include to still have it uh, flagged here in this light green color? And then the frac barrier, uh, you know, what's the maximum frac barrier that we think we may be able to complete a well through? And so let's take a look at, at how changing these affect our, affects our results. So first of all, if we were to go with a, a significantly lower value for, for each of these. So if we, if we look at this, now what we see is things become uh, much more homogenous. And, and what we see is that, you know, we, uh, we have more of these stringers, but because we've set our discontinuity very low, it's, uh, it's saying that, hey, these packages are all quite separate. Um, if we say that we want to look at only thicker intervals, we'll notice that some of these thin stringers disappear. So it really helps you focus your eye on, uh, on the thicker intervals that are available within your zone of interest. So, you know, maybe you would say, looking at this, that you would want to land a well either here in the deeper portion of the Alston chalk or here right at the top of the Alston chalk where we seem to have a higher concentration of uh, net reservoir. So if you if you think that after consulting with your completions engineer that you can complete through a lot of uh, non-reservoir uh, quality rock in this case, and, and remember, this is non-reservoir quality rock that's also not really a frac barrier. You know, maybe it's a bit low porosity relative to our cutoff. Um, so let's say we felt like we could frac through, you know, a, a higher amount of that. So, you know, we change this. And now what we see is it, it starts to fill in our flags here for us. And so, you know, once again, now our eye is really being drawn to this lower package. But we also have some, some packages uh, here in the middle that start to become... Uh, more interesting and of course the higher you put that number the more continuity that you're going to start to see now we do have uh, some frac barriers uh, in here and right now we have our frac barrier tolerance set very low so so down to one foot um, so that means one foot of frac barrier means that we are breaking our package up um, now you're going to be able to frac through a few feet of frac barrier let's say you can frac through 10 feet of, of frac barrier when you do that now, you can see that, that this all becomes one continuous interval uh, that your completion might reach. Um, and of course, you know, the higher you put that number and the higher you put your uh, discontinuity, the more that it will allow you to fill in this package, uh, almost essentially to the point where you would then say the entire Alston chalk will behave as a single package if completed. Um, so, you know, uh, so that is how that analysis works. Um, but still, for the purposes of, 
really understanding where to land this well. That's why we have the color coding on here where you're, where the the reservoir or the net pay that you are concentrated here is shown on the dark green. And so you can see there's a much higher concentration of better quality rock here in the lower half of the Alston chalk in this well. And so that is probably where you would want to uh, mark your landing zone uh, based on this type of analysis. Okay, I uh, hope this was useful to you. Um, if you have any questions or if anything is unclear, as always, you can contact us at support at Thank you.